Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This one's going to be pretty special. I only do these videos once a year because this is going to be on the Portland Retro Gaming Expo from 2017. Now, a little bit of backstory um, before we jump into the clips and everything. Um, this was my second year attending the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and it was my first time being a vendor. And for those of you who don't know, Myself and my really good friend Kevin are working towards opening up a retro video game store in Vancouver, Washington. It's going to be called Double Jump Video Games. If you're interested in, you know, seeing some stuff about that, there's links in the description to the Facebook and Instagram pages for the store. But this was our first time selling as the store, and we did very well. We actually beat our goal, which is awesome. We uh, handed out a lot of business cards. We got a lot of uh, interest in the store which is very awesome so we pretty much did what we set out to do and um yeah it was a ton of fun i had a lot of fun um meeting lots of people obviously i met a lot more people this time than i did last year because i was talking to a ton of people coming up to the tables um but i was able to have a couple pretty nice conversations with metal jesus rocks pat the nes punk uh gamester 81 gerard the completionist um John Hancock, a few other people, uh, Reggie and um, Casey the Game Nerd, lots of people. It was really, really, really cool. It was nice to see all those people again. Um, they're always super cool. Gerard actually bought quite a bit of stuff from us from the store, which was awesome. Um, but also my friend Sam had flown in from Florida to not only attend the expo, but also to hang out with me. He stayed at our place here, and he actually helped us. Uh, at the expo, which was awesome. So I actually took a bunch of clips with Sam the day before uh, before the expo. We drove around to some Goodwills and a bunch of video game stores and everything, and we had intended on making a video just about that day, um, but we got back pretty late. We were super busy, um, so we ended up um, just filming when we were kind of out and about, we were going to do a pickup portion at the end of the video, but excuse me, never got around to doing that. So the stuff I have to show you guys here are going to be my pickups from not only the Retro Expo, but from the day before. So I'm going to go ahead and insert all those clips uh, that I took with Sam right here. There he is! It's Sam! Hey man, it's a long time no see. How's it going? Good. Oh, Just picked camera. up Sam. Camera. We're making a video today. <laughs> video? Heck yeah. Alright. We are at our first stop here at Video Game Wizards. I don't know if they're going to allow me to film, but I will take the camera and see if I can.
so most we've... of the good games they had in there, we both already had. <clears throat> Mainly it was like cartridge only. Probably yeah, the highlights so... being like Mario Party 3. It's a good game. So we've been to, this is our second stop. We didn't buy anything here. From the first one, I got some Nintendo Powers. And uh, Tomb Raider figure, it's sealed, which is cool, but Sam has yet to purchase anything. But we have plenty more stops, so let's keep going. So as you can see, we had a lot of fun going around to a bunch of the local game stores and we got some pretty cool pickups. I don't know if all of them were shown, but um, this, the very few items I did pick up are going to be shown in this video um, as well. So I believe I might have shown some stuff in the last video. Not sure. But first off, uh, there was one more game included and Sam is my friend who I bought that insane Super Nintendo collection from. If you guys haven't seen that video, go back on my channel. It was uh, only a few videos back, but I bought his entire complete in box Super Nintendo collection. And there were a few other things uh, mixed in. There was some cartridge stuff, and then there were some DS games and stuff like that. So uh, he actually brought with him one game that was supposed to be included, but he forgot to put it in the boxes. And that is a sealed copy of Spirit Tracks for the DS. So he brought that with him in person when he came and gave that to me, which is awesome. But now getting into the stuff from the expo, and I'm sure some things are going to have stories, and I'll stop and tell you guys those as we get to them. But I had a lot of fun. At the end of the expo, I ended up with a bunch of stuff that was fairly cheap, not really desirable. And so I walked around after the expo was over to the other vendors who were packing up, and I gave away some stuff for free, actually, um, from the store. Um, we had a small box of PC games. Um, I had a DJ Hero 2 for the Wii in the big box, which I actually gave to Reggie, um, and just a bunch of, not a bunch, but a few other items, uh, cause we needed to, we needed to get rid of as much stuff as we could because we had four vehicle trips to bring stuff there, but only two back. So, uh, luckily we did it. Um, but I gave something to, to a guy and then he offered to give me a free hat. So he gave me this hat, it's Keep It Retro, and that's RetroGamePlayers.com. Little plug for that guy, you guys can check out his website. And then, mm, I have a lot of stuff to show you guys, so I'm just gonna just jump into it, I guess. Um, kind of, at, this was going to be something that my girlfriend was getting me for Christmas, and her best shot of getting it was at the expo, so, um, so she bought it for me, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to count towards my Christmas gifts or not, but that is a Retron 5. And this is something that I wanted, this is something that I asked for. Uh, this one is still sealed, but we are, of course, going to open it up and hook it up. Um, I wanted one of these because I don't have enough room in my game room for a CRT in addition to the flat screen that I have. So this is the best way that I'm gonna be able to play all these systems on the TV that I have. And um, it's also going to make it much easier to do to do uh, game capture stuff um, with everything just being HDMI out. That's gonna be very, very nice. And um, this will allow me to have m just more options to play. Um, there are some systems here that, are in that you can play games on here that I don't have hooked up, like the Sega Genesis. I just don't have room to hook up a bunch of systems, so I had to pick and choose, but this is going to not only make space uh, for more stuff, but it's going to allow me to play more of my games, which is awesome. Very happy to have that. One other system that we picked up is the Superboy S, which is, of course, the portable Super Nintendo, and my girlfriend mainly wanted this. Um, I think they're handy to have, um, especially if you're going to do a Craigslist deal, you can test games on here. If you're picking up something pretty rare, you want to make sure it's legit. Um, but she's been playing uh, Link to the Past on this. So 
it's getting some use, um, but it's a pretty cool upgrade from the other one. I used to have the older model, um, but this one is much nicer, so cool to get that. Then I got one amiibo here, and that is the Majora's Mask Link, which I didn't have, and unfortunately it's not in the best condition. This down here is kind of ripped up. And so we paid $20 for this, and not only, I think a couple days later, uh, Best Buy started getting them back in stock. And I've actually seen these in Best Buy uh, after buying this one, which really sucks, because I can get them for like 12 or 13 bucks with the Gamers Club. Um, so, kind of sucks, bittersweet. I mean, I'm glad to have it, but it's not in the condition I would have wanted, and it's not for the price that I would have wanted. But uh, nothing I can do about it now. At least I got it. And then I have some video game uh, figures here, which if you guys have been watching for a little bit, you guys will know that I've been kind of uh, getting more interest in stuff like this. So I picked these up from the from the expo. So we got Darkstalkers 3. This is Victor and uh, Ghost Professor. Pretty cool. Another Darkstalkers 3 is uh, Lilith and I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the other guy's name. And there are three, well, I think there's six figures, but there's um, there's three packaged figures like this. So I got two of the three. I'm missing, I'm missing John Talbane and Baby Bonnie Hood, but very cool to get those. Then I got the uh, Racing Champions Donkey Kong 64 diecast cars. So there's five cars here. Very, very cool. Then I picked up another video game, Superstars, which is the the company or the brand that made the uh, the, Doc, the Darkstalkers one, as well as the X-Men vs. Street Fighter figures I have. But this one is Tomb Raider, which I thought was very cool. And this is Lara Croft with Wicked Weapons and Ferocious Foes. So video game, uh, video game Superstars presents up at the top there. They make a lot of these little figures here, which I think are very, very cool. And then one more figure. This is the Soul Calibur Shang-Yu. Shang Not exactly sure how to pronounce her name, but there's that one. Very, very awesome. I would like to get the Nightmare figure. It shows, uh, it shows three on the back. So Mitsurugi and Nightmare, which looks awesome. And then it says there's a volume two for Ivy, Keelik, and Astaroth. I'd like to get some more of those. And then at the very end of the expo, um, Brett Weiss came up to the table and he was offering his book at kind of like a wholesale price to vendors because he needed to catch a plane and he had more books with him than he could take home. So I bought one from him and, the, and his book is The 100 Greatest Console Video Games 1977 through 1987. Very, very awesome book. Uh, MSRP of 35 bucks, and I think he gave it to me for 20 which is very cool. I would have loved to buy more um, and help him out, but um, I, I don't really need more than one. Um, but I thought that was very cool. He was a nice guy. Um, yeah, just awesome book. I flipped through it a bit, and it looks very, very cool. It'll go well with uh, the, the NES guidebook from from uh, Pat the NES Punk that I have. Very cool. Next up are a couple a couple boxed uh, Game Boy items here. The first one is actually just the box, but it does have the baggie, and I believe, no paperwork, but it has the baggie and the box at least, and that is for a grape Game Boy Color system. It's got a bit of a rip on the artwork, but not bad, and uh, I got this for 10 bucks from a friend of mine named John. Uh, Vombi is what he goes by on Instagram. You guys can check him out, but got this for 10 bucks. I also got a bunch of, I believe, 3DS boxes from him that don't have systems in them just like this, but they were 10 bucks each. I uh, got like the Smash Brothers one, the Pokemon one, stuff like that. So uh, hopefully I can find those systems and complete those. And then I got a boxed Game Boy Advance system, and this is a special bundle version, and I believe I got this for. 45 if I'm not mistaken, but that is the a white Game Boy Advance and this is a Kmart exclusive Which has a Nintendo Power trial subscription for three months 
There's a little bit of ripping on the side there, but it does have the system, which is pretty cool. No baggy, um, and I believe no paperwork, which kind of sucks because uh, the whole the whole reason it's a bundle is because it has that offer, but the paperwork for it is not included. So um, kind of sucks, but you know, still a cool box Game Boy Advance system to have. Then I have two Atari 2600 games, and these are these are not items that I looked out for at the show at all, but um, a lot of the buying, a lot of the buying and selling um, of the really good stuff gets done on Friday before the expo actually opens. Vendors will go around and buy and sell stuff to and from each other. Um, we didn't sell anything to any vendors because we wanted because our prices were pretty cheap, and some vendors were trying to buy like every N64 game out of our glass case. So we decided not to sell anything to other vendors on Friday so that the general public um, had, a, had the option to buy from us. Um, but I did a lot of buying on Friday, which I'm glad I did because I got some good deals, but I also didn't get a lot of time to go around Saturday and Sunday because I was working at the table, of course. But the guy had these out for $3 each, which I couldn't pass up. They're both factory sealed 2600 games. The first one is Real Sports Football, and then I got Real Sports Baseball. And they are probably not worth any, any more than $3 each, but um, this is the kind of stuff that I will never want to buy off of eBay. And I don't see it in person, but I mean, 6 bucks for two sealed 2600 games that I didn't have, I think that's a pretty good price, and I love finding stuff like this when I can, especially when it's cheap. Next up are original Xbox games, and this first one here is sealed, but it has a huge rip on the front saw. I mean, it is still sealed and never played, but it's not a good seal, but uh, my friend actually found this at the Goodwill outlet, and uh, sold it to me, and he brought it to the expo, because that was the next time we were going to see each other, but that is Mad Dash Racing. It's got a big rip, like right here, and then it goes over the spine and on the back a little bit as well. And I actually didn't notice that when buying it because if I had seen that, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but it's not a big deal. The other two I got from the same guy that had the Atari 2600 games. I got a sealed copy of Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Like I said, these are still sealed. That was, I think, three or four dollars. And then I got a sealed copy of Family Guy, the video game for the Xbox. And this is a game that I was actually looking for when Sam and I were going around to the game stores the day before. And I saw it at two game stores, and they each had it priced at the same price, which was $13.99 for a complete copy. I got a factory sealed copy for 5 bucks at the Expo. So I'm so glad that I didn't buy it the day before. But I think complete, it's only like an $8 to $10 game, so I wasn't about to pay $14 anyway. But 5 bucks for a sealed copy, that was a great price. And I got a few other games from that same guy as well. Uh, I got some sealed PS2 games, but I have one open PS2 game, which is The Mummy Returns. I got this the day before with Sam. Um, from, I don't know if we filmed, but the very last store, uh, Retro Game Trader in Beaverton, Oregon... Uh, if you spend above a certain amount of money, you get to pick a free game off the shelf. And so this was the free game that I picked just because I didn't have it. But then the sealed games that I got from the expo were Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon uh, Jungle Storm. This one was, they were all either three, four, or five dollars. I don't remember exactly, but sealed for that price, I'll take it. And then also sealed Goldeneye Rogue Agent. I believe this one was five dollars along with this one that has a sealed copy of Summoner 2 for five bucks. And I don't know what a sealed copy of this goes for, but I know it's a lot more than five. I think even a complete copy is five bucks. So I was very glad to get that. Then I got one PlayStation 1 game and um, I kind of just got this thrown in on a deal. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it, but I think it was like 15 or 10, 10 15 or 20 bucks, somewhere around there. And that is a complete copy of Sui Coden. And I already have the second one, so I figured I might as well pick up the first one. So I was glad to get that. And then I guess I'll show you guys these. And then after these, everything else is going to be Nintendo. So uh, this is Sega stuff here. For five bucks, I picked up a sealed copy of The Lion King for the Game Gear. And honestly, it's not worth much more than that at all. 
I think you can get them off eBay for under 10 bucks shipped for a sealed copy, but um, I didn't have the game yet. I never pick up Game Gear games. I think I only have four Game Gear games in my entire collection so far. And I, don't, I don't have a system yet either, but sealed for five bucks in per <clears throat> excuse me, in person. I thought that was pretty cool and I decided to grab that one. Then the other one here is a 32X game, which I'm very glad to have. Um, I always look for the, I always look at the 32X games when I see them if I'm at a game store or at the expo. Um, there aren't too many games in the set, and I would like to uh, finish this collection um, sooner than later. So I picked up this one. I think I got it for about sixty dollars, which is a pretty good price, and that is a complete copy of Knuckles Chaotix, one of the more pricey 32X games, at least that I know of. Not the most expensive, but not super cheap. I think it goes for like 80 to 90, so I think 60 or 65 was a pretty good deal. So I was glad to get that one. And then everything else is going to be Nintendo. So I'm going to go with Game Boy stuff. And then we have NES, Super Nintendo, and N64. So from my friend John, I also got a bunch of Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance boxes and manuals. And then this game was included, which is actually factory sealed, and that is Wade Hickston's Counterpunch. Sealed copy there. And then, uh, the so these ones are all going to be boxes or boxes and manuals. No cartridges in these, and some of them don't have manuals, but I got all these from him, uh, from John as well. And uh, I don't know what it, we did like a partial trade part cash kind of thing, so I don't know what I paid for these in the end, but... Very glad to have them, and I will find cartridges eventually. So the first one is Bok Tai, The Sun is in Your Hands. I already have the second one, so I'm glad to have that one. Then we have Lunar, or Lunar Legend. And then this is a pretty nice one, Revelations the Demon Slayer. Game Boy Color RPG by Atlas. And then Top Rank Tennis for the original Game Boy. Space Invaders. Advance Wars. Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Bomberman, the classic NES series, and this one actually has the cartridge in it. Didn't realize that, but there's no manual and no cartridge or no uh, cardboard insert. And then Pokemon Crystal version, and I was very glad to get this one. Um, I find the game fairly often. I can find one to put in here. There was no manual, however, so I need to track down one of those. But I know they're not super expensive. But I actually picked up uh, some other games from the expo, from other vendors uh, for the collection here that kind of tie into the Pokemon Crystal. So I got the Pokemon trading card game. I got Pokemon Red version. Pokemon Blue version. Pokemon Yellow version. Pokemon Silver. And Pokemon Gold. And all of those are fully complete. Uh, maybe missing like the baggies, but as far as all the paperwork and the manuals and the cartridges, they are all complete and uh, very glad to find those. I paid between 50 or I think I paid between 45 and $60 each for those. Uh, Pokemon Blue and Yellow were the first ones I found. Those are 50 bucks each. Um, and I paid pretty close to what they were worth for most of them, minus the Pokemon Yellow. Um, but I'm very glad to have them. I had all the Pokemon games in my collection before, and then of course sold everything, so I'm trying to build that collection back up. Uh, out of the Game Boy Advance ones, the only one I have is Ruby, and I believe I have Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire, but I still need Sapphire, uh, Leaf Green, Fire Red, and Emerald, but, and then of course the cartridge and manual for that one, but I will find those eventually, and I was very glad to get all those Pokemon games uh, it was kind of a goal of mine for the expo, um, so I'm glad that I was able to do that, at least for most of them. So moving on to NES, this first one comes from the day before with Sam from a game store. I picked up Monopoly for the NES, but this one is in mint condition, and it still has the plastic on the box just cut open at the top there. So I love finding games with the plastic still on them, so had to pick that one up. I think it was about 15 bucks, which is not a steal, but in that condition, I was very happy paying that. And then um, I got, I picked up this box here. 
I think this is one of the items that I got with the Sui Coden from another vendor, and that is the box. I don't know if there's a manual in here, but it's at least the box for Rainbow Islands for the NES. So very awesome to get that one. It's not in the best condition, but it's it's not bad. And then once again from John, uh, I picked up these from him. These are pretty mint condition as well. Boxes and manuals only for Metroid and Kid Icarus. I've no, I didn't have Kid Icarus last time in my collection, but I did have Metroid. But very glad to get those. And like I said, the boxes are pretty minty. They're in very nice condition. So very glad to get those. And I should be able to find cartridges for those fairly easy. So moving on to Nintendo 64 stuff. First up here is just a manual for Snowboard Kids 2. I don't even have this game yet. I don't have the box or the cartridge, but uh, my friend Andrew brought this to the expo for me to trade. So I ended up trading him. Uh, I don't even remember what it was, but traded for that manual. Uh, not an easy to find manual, so hopefully I can find a box and a cartridge to complete that. And then in my last pickup video, I showed you guys some Nintendo 64 accessories that I got in a trade over Instagram. And then um, right, as he, right as we were loading up to leave from the expo, um, I walked over to Pink Gorilla, to Pink Gorilla's table, um, to Kelsey, and she knew that I was looking for uh, boxes and stuff, and she had these, and I think I gave her... I think she said a dollar each, but I just gave her five bucks and told her I didn't need the change because that was a great deal. And um, I mainly just got these because the ones I showed you guys in the last video, some of them were missing cardboard inserts or paperwork or stuff like that. So these were basically purchased to complete my copies. And uh, some of these might be in better condition. So of course I'll put together the best condition, complete one, and then I'll have extras. So I got the boxes for a memory card the RF switch and the rumble pack and none of the none of the accessories are in here they're just the boxes with the paperwork and stuff but like I said I needed the inserts like the the rumble pack has a cardboard insert and the baggie but the last one I got didn't so I'll put them together and complete complete them which is awesome which gave me a good deal on them and then I got some complete in box games here which are coming from multiple different vendors so First up, these were two condition upgrades, um, and I believe one of them was $9, the other was $10. So that's Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six and Forsaken 64. And these are both about $15 to $20 games, so for $9 and $10, bucks, uh, I thought that was a pretty good deal. I can upgrade my personal copies and then uh, trade, trade the other ones for something I'm missing. And then I picked up GoldenEye 007, which I actually still didn't have in my collection. Every time I see it, it's the player's choice version, so I was happy to find a Black Label one, um, or a first release one, and I paid, I believe, 30 for it, which is not a terrible deal, but it's you know, still pretty good. And then I picked up a complete copy of Duel Heroes for 25 and this is about a 50 $55 game, so for 25 bucks, that was a pretty good price. And then I also picked up a complete copy of Micro Machines 64 Turbo, and this comes with a little police car up there, which is very cool. Didn't have this one yet. Um, the box isn't in perfect shape. It's got some creasing, but I was happy to get that one. I don't remember exactly what I paid, but I remember it wasn't a steal. Uh, I paid pretty close to what it goes for. And then I also picked up Mystical Ninja starring Goemon, which I was very happy to get. And I think, I don't remember exactly. Um, I know that I have it uh, written down in my spreadsheet, but um, you can double check if you want. There's a link in the description to, the, to my website. But I think it was 70, somewhere around there. Once again, not in mint condition, but still very good. And I'm happy to get that one knocked off the list. Now... Moving on to Super Nintendo, and then I have one special item for the very end. So at the end of the expo, um, I decided to walk around while everyone was tearing down and try to make some last minute deals because that's really when you're going to get the best prices. 
and uh, I really did. So for 30 bucks, I got a complete copy of Mario Paint. And as you can tell, the box isn't perfect, but it is fully complete. It's got the mouse, the mouse pad, and the game, and it has the little uh, plastic or cardboard insert as well. So a little styrofoam insert. So very glad to get that. Didn't have it yet. The only other one I saw at the expo was 55 and it didn't even have the cartridge. So for 30 bucks, I thought that was a great price. Then um, this one, I believe is just a box and manual. And this came from the day before from Metro Game Trader. And I believe it was, I think it was like three or $4, but that is ESPN Baseball Tonight. Just the box and manual, like I said, but it was super cheap. Then um, I don't remember where I'm, this one came from the expo, but I don't remember what I paid for it or who I got it from. But that is sounds like the box and maybe manual for Prehistoric Man. No cartridge for sure, though. And then, uh, so I believe these next two came from the same guy that I got the um, the Rainbow Islands box from. And that is Disney's Pinocchio in very nice condition. Not a cartridge that I ever see, so hopefully I can find one. And then also Mario's Early Years Fun with Numbers. Very glad to get that one. Not a rare game or anything, but it is technically a Mario game, so nice to get that. Then I got two more here. These two came from the same seller, uh, and these were ones that I got right at the end when they were tearing down. So I got Krusty's Super Fun House, and this one still has the plastic on the box, just cut open at the end which I really like. It's got like a hang tab and stuff on there, but you can see the plastic on there. So I got that one. And then this one was a pretty nice one. And that is Imperium. Not a common game. This one is complete. And I got, I believe I got both of these plus the Mario paint came from that guy um, for, I want to say 200 and he had this one alone priced at 180 I believe. So, got a pretty good deal. So, awesome additions to the Super Nintendo collection. So, I have one more item to show you guys. And this is not the most rare or most expensive item that I got. But it is my favorite item that I picked up. So, let's take a closer look. So, this is it. This is a Ready to Rumble Boxing countertop standee. And it's branded for the Dreamcast, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64, and PlayStation 1. And it actually talks. So let's take a listen. Come on, go get some. Let's rumble, hoes. On the chip. Let's get ready to rumble. So those were my pickups and my experience at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2017. We've already purchased our tables to sell next year, so I hope that I can meet some of you guys there. And I just had a ton of fun, and it was really awesome. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching this long video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more retro game content. Thank you guys so much once again, and I'll see you next time.